Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Prayer Watch tonight. And we bless the Lord for His presence among us. Let us read from Psalm 138, and it says, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name. For your unfailing love and your faithfulness, for you have so exalted your solemn decrees that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answer me. You greatly emboldened me. Praise the Lord indeed, for he is good and his love endures forever. May these words embolden us to listen and to ask in prayer tonight. Let us pray. Hallelujah, we praise you, O God for this wonderful day that you have made. Indeed, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be praised because you are wonderful beyond words, beyond the mind can imagine. We praise you tonight, Lord, with our prayers, with your words from your scriptures, and also, O oh God, with the meditations of our hearts. We believe your Holy Spirit is in us and among us, uniting us in faith, so that we may rise up to your understanding of your words and that we may get out of this place, we may um, finish this worship with so much more joy and thanksgiving, faith and uh, service. We pray, Lord, that we will be able to exalt your name and magnify you in our thoughts in our words and even in our prayers in jesus name we pray amen mark 11 have faith in god jesus answered truly i tell you if anyone says to this mountain go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen it will be done for them Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Believe whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This promise sounds so extremely wonderful and attractive. Imagine all you have to do is believe and you will receive what you ask for. Many, even Christians, immediately grab this statement as a coupon to claim whatever they desire, but only to be disappointed later on to find out that the prayers for miracle that they have been asking for, prayers for healing, prayers for uh, getting through and passing an exam, or uh, getting the promotion that they wanted, and so forth and so on, does not happen. Like all our reading in scriptures, we must approach it with a sincere desire to know God, His truth, and what He wants to tell us what he wants to teach us so that we may know his ways and that we may learn and be transformed. You know, there is the human tendency to misuse scriptures by looking for a statement here and there, a verse here, and a verse there. Sometimes we don't even finish the whole verse, but as soon as we grab what we had wanted to uh, to hear and believe after all, we stop in our tracks and say, that is it. Um, sometimes we read the Bible simply to justify what we want to believe, to look for the verses that will support our, our preconceived notions or what we desire. Now it is wrong to use scriptures to agree with us. Rather, it is for us to agree with scriptures regardless of how this may prove us wrong or correct later on 
truth does not depend on us and our position towards it. Truth is truth, whether we believe it or not. As 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 says, But God's truth stands firm like a great rock, and nothing can shake it. And so this passage that we have uh, read earlier is another one of those truths that we must seek uh, wisdom for so that we may understand what uh, the Bible wants us to understand and not merely receive the superficial and the immediate uh, notions that they give us. <clears throat> you will notice that this passage is another lesson on prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. His teaching delivers a great and powerful promise. So I'm sure we would like to know what he means by it so that we too may ask in prayer and receive our fervent desires. Now there are two key words in Jesus' promise that we need to define in order to understand this promise. The words believe and whatever. Let's step back several verses earlier, uh, beginning with verse 11, so that uh, we may know the context of this teaching. Now, we are told that the previous day, Jesus entered Jerusalem and uh, he went into the temple courts. He looked around and uh, he found it in physical and spiritual disarray. But since it was already late, he decided to spend the night in Bethany. And the following morning, as he was on his way to Jerusalem, we are told that Jesus was hungry and saw a fig tree that was full of leaves. He went closer to look for fruit, but because he found none, he was, uh, he was apparently angered by it, although we know that it was not yet the season for figs, as the scriptures tell us. He cursed that tree that it may never bear fruit again. Now, have you ever wondered why Jesus would do such a thing as curse a fig tree because it was fruitless when they knew all along that it was not yet the season for fig bearing. Or could it be that Jesus uh, would have done such a drastic measure simply because he was hungry and he was not satisfied having not been able to find any fruit? Besides, um, as I said, it wasn't yet the season for figs. Now, I read in an article written by a Messianic Jew something that would make us understand more clearly, uh, in more detail, why Jesus would have reacted that way based on the characteristic of the fig tree. According to that author, the fig tree actually has two kinds of crops in a year. One is the main crop that grows out of the new, uh, the new wood that uh, is supposed to bear fruit that particular year, and that is usually between the months of April to, uh, to fall of the current year. New wood growth, and the other kind of crop is what they call the breba crop. These are the fruits that grow from the previous year's wood or the mature branch, which are ready for picking even before the appearance of the current fruits uh, for that year. So, ibig sabihin, may dalawang klase pala ng mga bunga sa puno ng figs. Ang isa ay yung bunga mula sa um, bagong tubo na naaangko para sa taon na yon, usually between uh, April, spring to, to fall. And the other kind of fruit is what is called the breba crop. 
ayun yung mga bunga na nanggagaling sa lumang kahoy o yung dating kahoy nung nakaraang taon na naging magulang na at uh, nagkakaroon din ng mga bunga na nauuna pa kaysa sa bunga na inaasahan doon sa taon na yon. So, this is also called the bonus crop. Now, they are usually few in number but they are they produce some of the largest and the sweetest figs in that particular year. And so, uh, the Jews uh, or the Jewish writer concludes that it was the breba crop no, that Jesus was probably looking for when he uh, was, look, was looking at that fig tree. But then, of course, he was disappointed to find out that there was none. Now, just like with all other Jesus' actions and words, they are loaded with a deeper meaning that, than what is immediately seen or heard. No? So, let us see what uh, Jesus must have thought or must have uh, in mind, have had in mind when he cursed that fig tree. We follow him uh, in his journey, travel, and here in our verse, uh, just immediately before the verse that we read, Jesus uh, entered the temple and he drives out those who were buying and selling there. And he did not allow them to continue selling their merchandise. So that is the reason why we could conclude that that is probably what he saw happening the previous day already. And uh, he was uh, checking on the next day only to find out that the same thing was happening. Now, why was he angry? He was angered because the temple was meant to be a house of prayer, a spiritual uh, haven for specifically receiving spiritual help and well-being of those who had come. But now it had become a marketplace. Now, who knows how business was probably taking place and how the goods were traded. We are told that Jesus even called it a den of robbers. It reminds us of uh, what Malachi said to the nation of Israel when he said that they were under a curse because they robbed God by not giving the proper tithes and offerings for his temple, the proper tithes and offerings for worship. And who knows if there was any kind of illegal practice that was taking place in the, in the temple courts that Jesus um, saw. So going back to the cursing of the fig tree, we see this things taking place, we can say that it was a harsh rebuke of supposedly the mature branch. That is, the rabbis, the priests, the teachers of the law, the Pharisees, the mature branch, the supposedly old wood of last year's fig tree that was supposed, who were supposed to bear fruit who were supposed to uh, demonstrate spiritual maturity, having already received everything, all the teachings from the Lord, and who were expected to give the proper shepherding to the flock, to the people. But Jesus saw none of these, as was evidenced by the conduct of the temple. He, we also know that these leaders were were one of the were the were the worst of the enemies of Jesus Christ because they refused to believe in his claims to his deity and his messiahship they did not produce fruit and so they left the people spiritually hungry we can therefore conclude that the cursing of the fig tree was a precursor it was a prophetic message of the judgment that Jesus had for this upon these Jewish leaders. No? Ang pagsusumpa 
ni Jesus doon sa punong yon ay isang uh, isang talinghaga, isang paraan upang ipakita niya ang galit niya at ang magiging uh, kahantungan ng mga mature supposed to be na mga mas nakatatanda na mga spiritual leaders ng Israel na dapat ay nangunguna sa mga bagay na makajos at sa dapat na tiwala o pananampalataya kay Jesus. Pero ito ay hindi nakita ni Jesus. Bagkus, ito pang mga chief priests and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law ang pinaka uh, malalaking uh, naging kaaway ni Jesus dahil hindi sila naniwala sa kanyang mga uh, sinabi na siya nga ang Diyos at siya ang Mesiyas. And so true enough, that was a prophetic word by Jesus that sometime in the year 70 AD the temple had been completely destroyed by the Romans and burned down and the priests were expelled or killed so this is now the background uh, this is what was going on prior to the teaching of Jesus about prayer so the first key word is believe. Believe. Whatever you believe in prayer, you will receive. Now, Peter remembered that fig tree that Jesus cursed the day before. And so when the following day when they um, passed by the tree along the same road to Jerusalem or to the temple, he was shocked to see that the tree had, uh, it had withered from the roots. In other words, the tree had died so abruptly, overnight. And Jesus' words affected the tree to its very roots. Then Jesus said, have faith in God. If anyone believes in what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Now, what does faith in God mean? The kind of faith that will result in receiving what you ask for in prayer. What does it mean to believe in God? When, G when, uh, when Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. What confidence uh, supports such a belief so that you can truly say that you have actually received it already even as you are praying? Now first, believe. First, it is the faith that results, the faith that results in answered prayers is by the strength and power of God in Jesus Christ. Faith that results in answered prayers is by the strength and power of God in Jesus Christ. Ang pananampalataya na nagbubunga ng katugunan sa panalangin ay sa pamamagitan ng lakas at kapangyarihan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Let us remember that God had sent Jesus to be the embodiment of His divinity. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Biblia na ang kabuuan, ang kalahatan ng pagkajos ng Diyos ay naroon sa katauhan ni Jesus. And that is why faith in God resides or the faith in God that uh, results in answered prayers is by the strength and power of Jesus Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Ang kabuuan ng Diyos na dakila, Diyos na hindi nakikita dahil siya ay Espiritu, ay naroon natin makikita sa katauhan ni Heso Kristo sa kanyang buong katauhan bilang uh, isang taong nabuhay sa mundong ito at uh, isang tao din na binuhay dahil sa kapangyarihan ng Diyos at ngayon ay naroon na nakalukluk 
sa kalangitan. He is the head over every power and authority. You see, the kind of power and authority that he has is what makes everything possible. We also know that the new covenant of God with his people is in the blood of Jesus Christ. The relationship of faith in God is through Jesus Christ. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Noong ipinadala ng, Pangino ng Diyos si Jesus sa mundo, ayun ay panahon upang ang bagong kasunduan, ano, ang bagong relasyon niya sa tao ay sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Jesus. And that is why that faith that is able to move mountains, that answers prayers, that is able to result in miracles, making the impossible possible, is by the strength and power of Jesus Christ. Any power that manifests itself outside of faith in Jesus Christ and His atoning sacrifice is not from God. Kung sino man ang dinadasalan, ng nino man na umaasa sa kapangyarihan na hindi kay Jesus, ay makakaasa tayo na yan ay nanggagaling sa kakaibang kapangyarihan na hindi banal. Yes, the evil one also has powers to show supernatural phenomenon. But those powers are meant to deceive people and ultimately snatch them, drive them away from the one true God. That's why we know of sorcery. Sorcery has been there even before, uh, from the ancient of times. No? Yeah, sorcery, kulang, hanggang ngayon, narin yan. Magic, like the, mag like the magicians of Pharaoh's time. And even now of our times, people are lured to go to faith or what you call fake, more of fake healers. And eventually, they end up more sick than when they had consulted and die. Or they may survive, but now they fall under the power of the evil one. Kaya, ayan pong mga yang mga kapangyarihan, mga, mga, um, mga himala na ginagawa o pinapaniwalaan ng iba uh, na wala sa pananampalataya kay Yesu Kristo ay isang, uh, isang kalokohan. No? At kalokohan, paglilinlang ng mga makapangyarihan na masamang espiritu sa mundong ito. Kaya kailangan mag-ingat tayo dyan. Dahil alam natin kung ano, anong sama, ano, anong uh, maaring peligro. Tsak na peligro ang kahihinatnan ng mga naniniwala sa ganyan. Secondly, uh, when Jesus said believe, He was talking about faith that moves mountains because it is anchored in knowing who God is and His truth. Our faith is always a faith that has a knowledge of God. No matter how small that may start, uh, it is meant to grow deeper. At hindi yung kumbaga, ay pananampalataya na nanggagaling lamang sa mga sabi-sabi at nanggagaling sa kasinungalingan. There is no such thing for a Christian as blind faith because our faith rests in the security and the solid foundation of scriptures. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He is a re and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. The biblical faith believes in a personal divine creator God who is a person with, of course, that person with a capital P because he is God. 
he is able to relate with human beings because he created us in his image in a way that we may be able to relate to him uh, mentally and uh, spiritually, even emotionally. Some people believe in God or in a God, but not as a person, but rather as a ambiguous entity or uh, actually as a universe that is divine in itself. A universe that is the divine in itself. May mga naniniwala sa isang makapangyarihang Diyos. Pero, ang Diyos na pinaniniwalaan nila ay malayo sa Diyos na um, ipinahahayag sa banal na kasulatan o sa Biblia. No? They believe in an impersonal God. A, a God who is not a person, but rather just a force. I have heard somebody says say uh, something about the power of the universe the universe itself um, that makes things happen simply because it is part of the universe now this is a false belief that has been uh, here thousands of years be before and is still very much around I happen to have been hearing uh, something of this kind of a belief recently in a radio program, not only once but a number of times when I was tuned to that particular station uh, while driving. And uh, the statement of the host gives away his belief about God as such, you know, an impersonal God. And he says, the universe will be good to you or will return to you what you give it or something to that effect na ang universe daw ay magiging mabait sa atin at napakabait ng universe kapag ito ay ating ding pinunlaan ng kabaitan so there you can see that uh, there is that subtle but very real deception making you think that uh, uh, the force in the universe that keeps it together is nothing but just the universe itself. Kaya magingat tayo dyan. This is a false belief because the Bible clearly tells us that God the Almighty is creator of the universe. He is not the universe. He is above and outside His creation. And the universe is just but a part of it. He is the creator of the universe and he is not the universe per se. Okay? So he is a God whom we should strive to know. He is a person, a, a God we should strive to understand and to obey because he rewards those who seek him. And uh, we know that he, God, who identifies himself as God, is the one whose words he caused to be written and preserved miraculously and amazingly in scriptures. The people of faith, those who uh, were led by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures, attest and witness to God as a person and all the rest. Uh, the prophets, the men of faith, the patriarchs, the apostles, and all those who came before us, all those who were part of um, the uh, foundation of our faith attest to God as a person revealed in Jesus Christ. So, the faith that moves mountains is the faith that is anchored in God and in His truth. You have to believe God for whom He says He is, that He exists as a person and that as such He hears prayers and that He has the power to answer these prayers. Now Jesus cursed the fig tree and it withered because you see the his prophetic purpose for saying that that declaration of his that prayer of his that the tree be cursed and not bear any fruit to pronounce and which means to say that his declaration to pronounce judgment 
upon the unbelieving Jewish leaders was anchored in God's word. Ang binanggit o sinambit na mga salita na ating Panginoong Jesus ay nakaangkla o nakasalalay sa salita ng Diyos dahil kanyang sinumpa ang puno na yon bilang isang paghuhusga um, sa mga leaders ng panahon na yon mga Jewish leaders na matitigas ang ulo at walang uh, pinakitang bunga sa kanilang buhay walang bunga ng pananampalataya Sinabi ko na nga kanina na sila pa ang nanguna sa pagkukontra sa lahat ng sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus tungkol sa kanyang pagiging Diyos at Mesiyas. He had a solid basis for condemning their unbelief. That is God's prophetic word from the Old Testament scripture pointing to Jesus as the Messiah. Anyone who does not believe is condemned already. So, Jesus was saying that in prayer, when you ask or pray for something, you must have a solid basis in scriptures for God to grant it. Because if you do, then it will be granted. Yan ay dapat may karapatan or mula sa salita ng Diyos, may katotohanan. May pinaghuhugutan mula sa Biblia. Now, another important nature of God that is repeatedly emphasized in scriptures is that He is good. He's not only powerful, He is good. That is, He is our Father in heaven. And that His heart and decisions are always for our best, our benefit, for the good of His children. And so we ask ourselves, is this the basis of your faith in asking. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things, God is at work for the good of those who love Him. Now, you have to believe not only that God is powerful, but that He listens to prayers and that He will act in a way that is absolutely good for you or for the petitioner who is praying. This is the kind of faith that can move mountains. Kaya sinabi ng Panginoon, ng ating Panginoong Jesus, namangha kayo na namatay ang punong aking sinumpa. Kaya nyo rin gawin yan. Mangyayari din. Matutugunan ang inyong hinihiling. Kung marunong kayong humiling na may pananampalataya dahil ang pananampalatayang yon ay may pinagbabasihan mula sa scriptures ng Panginoon. Then we can come to Him with confidence. Now, the second key word in our scripture reading for tonight is whatever. Whatever. What is whatever? Now, does it mean any and everything that we can think of or ask for? A preacher illustrated it this way. He said that sometimes we use words that may imply everything, but in fact, it may imply a generalization, but in fact, it may be limited by the context. What did he give us an example? For example, when a teacher comes to the classroom and then he asks, is everybody present now? Or is everybody here now? He means everybody that is enrolled in his class, right? And not, on, and not everybody in the school or even everybody in the whole world. If a father says to his son, while they are inside a toy store, you can get anything you want, son. He refers to those that are only within the store and not anything in the whole world. No? So, merong limitasyon yung mga sinasabing whatever, everything, and anything. As we can see in the teaching of Jesus on prayer. In the same way, we know that the whatever 
we can understand that whatever that Jesus said also had its context or boundaries. Well, one of the one of the proofs that we know that we cannot just ask whatever and it will be done to us is that we know from experience that not everything that we ask for means uh, whatever thing that we ask for is granted, right? No matter how much there may be basis in uh, in scriptures or no matter whether no matter the fact that we we are reborn in the spirit and that we believe in Jesus Christ so merong limitation din yung whatever as we can see in 1st John chapter 5 verse 14 and let me read to you uh, from 1st John chapter 5 verse 14 this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything According to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. So the whatever is everything that is in accordance with his will. Whatever that is in accordance with his will. I believe this is the heart of the matter. God's will. What is God's will? So that we may pray for it and so that when we pray for it, we will receive favorably God's answer. Sometimes it is not a matter of not knowing God's will but it is more of uh, agreeing with God's will it almost goes without saying that God's will is what he teaches in scriptures pag sinabi natin God's will ano nga ba ang kalooban ng Diyos alam natin kung ano ang nasasaad na kalooban niya sa banal na Biblia ay alam natin na ito ang kalooban ng Panginoon. We can be sure. But what if we don't know enough of God's will because we don't read scriptures enough? Then, the solution is to seek God because He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. So, siguro kung hindi pa natin alam ang kalooban ng Panginoon at mayroon tayong gustong ipagdasal, Mabuting basahin natin ang Biblia. Hingiin natin sa Panginoon na tayo ay bigyan ng kanyang kaliwanagan upang anong man yung ating mga kahilingan o ano yung ating mga uh, agam-agam, ano yung ating mga ninanas sa buhay, ay makikita natin ay nasa sumasangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. Sometimes we know something we desire is against God's will. But nevertheless, we pray for it. May mga pagkakataon, ano po, na alam naman natin na sa kaila-ilalima ng puso natin ay ipinapakita ng banal na Espiritu na hindi ito sangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. Pinapakita ng banal na Espiritu na mayroon tayong mga masamang intensyon at motibo. Kaya, uh, sabalit gusto pa rin natin ipagdasal. Well, um, alam na natin na hindi yun ang kalooban ng Diyos. Pero gusto pa rin natin ipagdasal. Tama ba yun? A woman once came to her pastor and asked, asked the pastor to help her pray that God may bless her relationship with the a boyfriend, which later on, only later on, did the pastor find out that uh, the boyfriend was already a married man and was currently still married to another woman. Sometimes, that is a kind of disobedience and uh, a prayer that is against God's will that nevertheless we pray for. At ang sabi ng Panginoon, ay hindi niya maaring ibigay ang ganoong katugunan 
sa kanyang anak dahil alam niya ito ay labag sa mabuting uh, sa kabanalan at labag sa kanyang kalooban. What do you think is God's will? And do you think God answered her prayer, that woman's prayer? Should that relationship be allowed to continue undiscovered by the legal wife so that they can carry on? We can be sure it is not with a blessing or by God's will. Maaring magpatuloy na hindi nalalaman o hindi napuputol ang ganoong klaseng uh, relasyon na labag sa kalooban ng Diyos. At kung yan man ay magpatuloy, alam natin na hindi ito sa dahil sa kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. We can be sure it is not with a blessing or by God's will because we know God's clear purpose for marriage. You see, succeeding in getting what we want in a way that is contrary to God's will should not be celebrated because this may mean that that person has fallen under the hand of the evil one or what the Bible calls having been given over to Satan. Pinabayaan na lang ang taong yun na sabi nga ay ma malumok sa kasalanan. Hindi ibig sabihin na nakuha natin ang ating hiniling, ang isang bagay na hindi sangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos, hindi ibig sabihin, hindi dapat natin yun ipinagdiriwang. Dahil yung pananatili ninyo o pananatili sa ganoong kalagayan na nasa uh, nalabag sa kalooban ng Diyos ay maaring isang senyales na na tayo ay uh, tayo ay hinayaan na ng Diyos sa ating kasalanan at uh, darating ang araw na that, um, aanihin ang masamang bunga ng paglabag uh, sa kalooban ng Diyos. So, um, ayaw natin na tayo ay malagay sa ganong sitwasyon. We don't want to be in that situation. If God must correct us, let it be that God corrects us now, even as we are asking it in prayer, kaysa tayo ay pabayaan na malulon sa masamang mga bisyo at masamang buhay. Now, we ask ourselves, what if after having sought God's leading in scriptures, you still do not know if what you are asking for in particular is in accordance with God's will? Sometimes, it is, it is very true that many people come to, to me or to other leaders to ask for God's will, for prayers, on some major decisions such as moving to another country or um, getting another job or uh, marrying a certain person. Ang sabi ng Panginoon dito, in prayer, in scripture, He will lead you. As some would testify, yes, there are some who are led by very specific instructions from the Lord and we cannot we cannot uh, we cannot deny that sometimes we just don't get the the exact word of the Lord even after we have read our Bible and prayed perhaps it is time to ask for counsel no? godly and Christian counsel from your um, your 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 mature Christian friends or counselors or even if we might be asking for something and we don't get it, okay. if we happen to say a prayer that we, are, we may not be very sure of but we are desiring to make some major decision, or even sometimes even after we have prayed for it and we don't get it, the kind of faith that our God wants us to have is a faith that is able to believe that God is working for our good. 
and that what we don't get is not the best for us. Kung tunay tayo naniniwala at nananampalataya na kilala natin ang Diyos na siyang uh, may karapatan, may kabutihan at may kapangyarihan na ibigay sa atin ang tunay na mabuti. No? The ultimate good. Kung kilala natin ang Diyos at nananampalataya tayo, naniniwala tayo sa ganoon, ay uh, marunong tayong humarap no? at marunong tayong tumanggap sa kung anong ibibigay ng Panginoon sa atin. Uh, many times we find out no, in hindsight that after all God was correct in withholding from us what we would have wanted Him to grant to us. Marami, alam ko, alam ninyo yan, madalas, marami mga bagay na hinihingi tayo, hinihingi natin, na akala natin yun na ang pinakamaganda sa panahon na yun o sa kasalukuyan at kapag hindi natin natanggap o nakuha mula sa Panginoon, ay uh, nakikita natin ano, paglipas ng panahon, dun lang natin nakikita na tama pala ang Diyos na hindi niya ito ipinaggaloon. My dear brothers and sisters, there are mountains of difficulties that you may be facing now. Alam niyo yung bundok? Yun ay bundok, ibig sabihin yun ay napakalaki, hindi ba? Mga bundok na higit pa ang uh, kung titingnan natin ay hindi maaring galawin dahil ito ay talagang naka uh, naka nakalagay na sa isang paraan na hindi na maaring mabago This really speaks this speaks more of uh, uh, a figure of speech to uh, describe difficulties almost like impossibilities in our lives. You may be facing one right now and you want to be able to move those mount mountains away so that uh, you can find relief, you can move on with your life. Yes, Jesus said, if you have the right kind of faith in God, you acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, you are asking in the power of His name, in your relationship to God through Him and that God is your Father in heaven who listens to prayers which are in accordance with His will. Even the most impossible becomes possible. That is what it means to move mountains. Not literally moving a physical mountain out of its place. Dahil sino ba sa atin ang nakapagpaurong na ng bundok mula sa kanyang kinatatayuan? Kundi ang Panginoon lamang kung gusto niya na ito ay lindulin at tanggalin sa kanyang pwesto. Diba? How about the mountain of sin that so easily entangles us? May mga ibang kasalanan tayo na sa tingin natin ay palagi na lang natin ginagawa at hindi imposible na tayong maka, makaahon pa. That is why um, sometimes there's also this mountain of unforgiveness of the sins of others. That is why in the end, Jesus says, Therefore, no, if you, says here, when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins. That is one of the most difficult things that a person can do, that is to forgive others. Napaka-imposible minsan, lalo na kung ang taong yon ay uh, palaging na rin at paulit-ulit pang ikaw ay uh, binibigyan ng o ginagawa ng kasamaan. And uh, Jesus said, well, the mountain of unforgiveness has to be driven away. Ask for, ask for that. Ask for the impossible. Ask for the ability and the power to forgive others. How about the mountain of unbelief in Jesus Christ? Perhaps you are praying for a loved one. You are praying for a people group you know, who are not yet believers in Jesus Christ. Or the mountain of worry. The mountain of poverty in material as well as spiritual matters. The mountain of problems or the bad breaks that are piling up one after another in your life. 
or the mountain of failing health. These mountains may be physical in nature, yes, and that will only be solved and that can only uh, be, be moved by the miracles of God. Yes, surely, God is able to do that. God is able to do the impossible just as the apostles were able to heal in Jesus' name and we believers and we believers in our time also pray for, the, uh, for miraculous healing. And we have testimonies, indeed, that the mountain of, uh, of physical sickness be moved, and it can be moved physically. These mountains may also be spiritual. And for sure, I know these are the larger mountains that we should be praying for. There is one solid basis of answered prayer that we can hold to in times like this. Ito yung pinanghahawakan natin na basis of faith, no? And uh, this is uh, uh, when Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you as well. From Matthew chapter 6. This is one of the guarantees. The uh, sure word of God that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these things everything the material things that we need the temporal things that we need the physical will be added will be given to us God will not abandon us God will not leave us empty handed if we are seeking to be to live under his kingdom rule. Kung tayo ay uh, handa na mamuhay sa ilalim ng kanyang pagsasako. No? This is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. This is one thing that is solidly anchored in scriptures. And so we know that if we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, then all our needs will be given to us as well. Whatever may be the whatever that you are asking for. Ano man yung whatever na yun, no? Because Jesus said, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you receive and it will be given and it will happen to you. Whatever that may, de may be right now, my dear brothers and sisters, you will know His will you will be able to receive His will if you give your utmost attention and priority to being right with God and following Him. And He will take care of the rest. My dear brothers and sisters, let us keep faith and continue to grow in our faith in God by knowing Him more so that we can trust Him more and we can hold on to solid, uh, solid promises in the Bible. His wonderful words of wisdom and love for the living of our lives. And let us remember that it is in Jesus Christ where the power lies behind our answered prayers. And let us make sure that we have a solid basis in Scripture for what we are asking. Then we know that God will answer us and move the mountains that block our way to victory. And so, let us remember to pray and ask and rest assured that whatever be God's answer, it is for our best. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Yes, we do believe, O oh God, with all our hearts that you are our Father in heaven. And it is in this spirit that we come to you, O oh Lord, even right now, as we think about the mountains of difficulty, the mountain of sin, the mountain of worry, the mountain of uncertainty, the mountain of one unfortunate event 
happening one after another. That we come to you in faith, O oh God. Thank you for assuring us through our reading of scriptures today that indeed, O oh Lord, you have given us this weapon of prayer by which we can ask of you in faith, believing, O oh God, that we are approaching a God who is powerful, who is loving, and who has our best and holiest interests in mind. Lord, I pray for each and everyone who is listening right now, who is present in this prayer meeting, who has a mountain that only a miracle can move. I pray, O oh God, that we will seek you. We will truly seek your truth and your will, your good will. We know, O oh God, your best will is what we want to pray for. And we know, Lord, that as we seek you in scriptures, in prayer, and listen to you, Lord, wait upon you. We know that you will point us to the best that we should be praying for. We know you will even change our desires if it is good, but it is not the best. We also lift up to you, O God, our ignorance of everything. We admit that we cannot see too far away into the future, or we cannot see too wide enough to know what is good, not only for ourselves, but even for the people we are praying for. And so we ask, O oh God, we seek you, Lord, we seek your will for our lives. And when we have sought and found it, Lord, we pray that we will continue to prevail in prayer and ask of it with all our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that one of the biggest mountains is the mountain of unforgiveness. We pray, O oh God, that we may truly be able to release forgiveness to those people who have hurt us, who continue to hurt us, who continue to sin against us, who continue to destroy us. For we know, O oh God, that no weapon that is uh, poised against us will prevail if we continue to cling to you, O oh God. Help us not to be afraid. But as you said, help us to be able to bless those who curse us. And <clears throat> help us to really be able to pray for their good and not for their downfall. We pray, O oh God, that we will release the mountain of anger that comes in the way of your blessings upon our lives. And uh, Lord, we do not want to be like the withered fig tree that Jesus would condemn because we are not bearing fruit despite the many, many years that you have nourished us with your word. Help us, O oh God, to truly bear the sweet and the big fruit that would be a that would serve to uh, feed even the spiritual hunger of people around us. Help us to be salt and light. Lord, we also pray for, even for the material and physical requests of, of these my brothers and sisters who are now praying with us. I pray, O oh God, that they will hold on to your scriptures, to your words, and that we know, Lord, that as long as we hold on to the truth, we will be able to not only receive your best for us, but we will be able to understand what is best for us, even when it may be painful at first. Thank you so much, O oh God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, who makes all of this possible. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Good night, everyone, and may we continue to pray in faith. In Jesus' name. Amen.